hearing me this time. Thank you for staying with us. We've just had a bit of a technical glitch there. Welcome to Nudgee College Orientation Day Online. My name is Peter Todd. I'm the Dean of Students uh, here at Nudgee and wa warmly welcoming you for the second time now. Feeling very much today like Tony Jones or Hamish McDonald from Q&A, but I hope today's panel doesn't get as fiery as that. Mums and dads, as I always say at home when you're looking at me, please be aware that the camera does add five kilos. I'm certainly much fitter in uh, real life. It is certainly a bit different to be coming to you uh, via the, the camera today, and we're very much missing you. Uh, Orientation Day is one of those very special events each year, and there's always a great energy in the room, a nervous energy, but a positive energy as we welcome new families into the Nudgee family. But not to be so personal today, but we're doing our best to uh, connect with your boys. They are underway and have made a great start. In fact, last night we welcomed 45 boarders uh, who have now spent uh, a night in boarding and I thank the families that have come from Longreach and Cairns and North Queensland. I believe a bus came from Gundawindi uh, there was that many families uh, and the boys have spent an exciting night in boarding last night and Mr Annetto will speak to that uh, a little bit later, our Dean of Boarding. We have 146 New Year Fives who have made their way to us uh, today. We've got 10 New Year Sixes, 68 New Year Sevens joining our 146 Year Sixes who are already here and about 40 new students from 8 to 11, so around 260 new boys and families, of course, then with us uh, today. Thank you to many of you who are tuning in at all hours from overseas. I know we have families uh, watching today from Singapore, of course, plenty from New Guinea, uh, from Dubai and other parts of the world. And unfortunately, even in Australia, it feels some of our interstate friends are a long way away at the moment. And I know you are watching here today. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the panel today, who uh, some of whom we'll hear from and others might just be here uh, to help us with some questions later on, Mr Fulliger, our college principal, Mr Corley, our director of junior school, uh, who will be critical uh, relationship-wise with families of boys going into year five and six. A person that you've probably heard a lot from but may not have met in person, Miss Susan Shakespeare, our director of admissions. Next to me is Mr Jason uh, Sebatik who is leading us uh, in a discussion about our learning and teaching uh, program shortly. Christian Anetto, our Dean of Boarding, uh, is here with us and he'll speak to the boarding experience last night uh, and welcome boarding families. And sitting next to uh, Christian is Mr Stephen Mara, our Dean of Identity. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are watching from today and you're with us uh, for around the next hour or so, we are very appreciative of you tuning in. And of course, as always, we thank you for trusting your sons uh, with Nudgee College. We come together today as a Catholic community uh, and a faith community. And what you'll get very used to at Nudgee is our school gatherings beginning with prayer. So I would welcome uh, to the screen now our Dean of Identity, Mr Mara, to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Peter, and good morning, everyone. Let's begin now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God of justice and compassion, we place before you our needs. As members of St Joseph's Nudgee College, nourish and inspire us to live justly. Guide us to be faithful to the vision of Edmund Rice, who showed a deep love for the poor and marginalised. Open our hearts and minds to accept and welcome all in our community. May we work together to build a better world and seek to live lives of love and service, justice and peace, to be signs of faith to all. Live Jesus in our hearts. Forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Stephen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Fulliger is very keen to give you a welcome. And uh, thank you, Mr. Todd, and it certainly is a warm welcome for us. It does feel a little unnatural, I'd have to say to you, from what we would 
would normally have here at the College of Orientation Day. We're coming, you from, coming to you from a, a very empty conference centre which would ordinarily on a day like today be filled with those 250 boys, 500 parents, a range of staff and, and the community would be here to, to welcome you. We're conscious that uh, you're viewing this remotely, either live or in due course in, in, in the hours or, or days to come. Whenever it is that you are viewing that, you are very, very welcome and I hope uh, you've already felt welcome, even as you're dropping off your sons this morning. I echo uh, Peter's recognition of all those who've come here, particularly the boarding community who've come from far and wide to be here. But I just suppose there was a, more than just the bus from Gundawindi coming, Mr Todd, as you'd be aware. There were some brave parents this morning who uh, caught the bus from local areas of Brisbane with their, son, with their sons to school this morning. I hope you've survived that trauma this morning, or at least I hope it wasn't traumatic at all. I hope you're able to sit back and enjoy the view, perhaps from the back seat of the bus this morning. Um, so can I just say welcome. I've just got a few general comments to make this morning. There's some specific information that, that other staff here on the panel will provide to you. And I think as a, as a parent coming into the school, it's those specific details that you want to know uh, that are so important. And while I've accentuated things that are different today about how orientation is at this moment for us as we sit here, what isn't different is your sons already are in the care of our staff. In house meetings uh, that are going on around the campus, They'll be meeting the key staff within their house, their house dean, if, and perhaps as you dropped your son off this morning, you will have met that gentleman, you will have met that lady who's going to take that pastoral responsibility for your son over the years to come. Likewise, you'll have meet, met boys from year 11 who'll be the seniors of the class of 2021, and those boys will also be assisting your son's first steps here into, into the college, college today. 260 new boys will come here January next year. They'll join uh, with all those boys who'll be returning. We'll have just on 1,700 boys here in total. So I'm conscious that for wherever you come uh, from with your son, whatever school he may be currently attending, it's very unlikely that he'll be coming from a bigger school than what we are. Uh, in making that transition from a smaller school to a bigger school, it's really about building relationships and finding out little bits of information along that way. Today we'll provide you with some information. Will we answer every question that's going to be that you'll need to answer before your son starts here in January next year? No, we won't. But certainly by the end of today, our session here, but also for your son here at the college, I hope that that will assist you beginning this process of your son joining Nudgee College and beginning that journey um, of becoming a Nudgee man. While we talk about orientation day today, my experience is that orientation is really a process and an ongoing one. Today is the beginning of that process. In due course, you'll be here in January next year, the first day, the first week, the first month, the first term. All of that is orientation for your son, but also for you as parents, as you work out how this school operates. It is a big school, um, and that's one of the reasons why you're bringing your son here. There's a range of opportunities, and that's one of the reasons why you brought your son to the college. But in all of that, there's a layers of complexity to work out what, who do I need to ask? How do I find that, 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 that piece of information? Um, and I think that's part of our journey is to support you here. The house system that your son's involved in even this morning is to, one of our processes to take a big school to make it feel like a smaller school. For you to, to connect with other parents, for you to connect with staff, for your son to connect likewise w with other boys is very, very important. We've already started with prayer today. You're well aware we're a Catholic school. So in, in, in being a Catholic school, we're a Catholic school for all. A Catholic school that welcomes boys who are Catholic, families who are Catholic, but also those who are not, uh, from a range of faith backgrounds and faith expressions. And it's part of the rich tapestry, part of our rich history of this school is what we claim to be, a school of values, a school of inclusion, a, a, a school that values all boys, whatever gifts and talents, whatever limitations they, they may bring. Certainly we're focused on the boy at the heart of this school. New boys as well as boys who are return, returning to the school. Getting the very best out of him through those range of opportunities. My colleague here, Chris Corley, sitting behind me, here, beside me, his work in the junior school and the staff who work with those boys when they first come into the school. Beginning that journey that I've already mentioned, but also developing his talents over the course of this year and the, year, the, and the years ahead. As a school, we talk a lot about improvement. 
that's for us as an institution, that's for us as, as a collective group of professionals, teaching staff, the support staff who are around the school as well, but also in your son, improving in himself, working himself out over that journey, becoming that boy who's coming here, who's maybe come in here quite tentatively today, through to the senior boy who will leave here in the years to come. In mentioning that, and while we welcome new boys today, we're really conscious that our year 12s are beginning the exit process. They're coming to the end of their journey as a nudgy man, one that they, over, they undertook some years ago. And while we're welcoming you today, in a couple of days' time, we have a day of farewell for our year 12s. And they've been on that journey through here, supported through this college, supported by a range of staff over those years. And I guess I promise to you as parents, you will also be part of that journey. You bring to, to us as the first educators of your sons, you bring your son and there's a real trust in what you undertake in providing your son, you bringing him to us, if that's the right word. I trust in us that we will do the best by your son as best as we can across the journey of school. Trust that when he becomes here as that nudgy boy, that he, on that journey becoming, the, we use a lot the term nudgy man, uh, there's a lot sits behind that. There's a lot to unpack in that. Just so there is an understanding of how the school operates and some practical things in the days and weeks and months ahead for him to understand and for you as parents. There's another process that has begun today and that goes on as well. The formation of him as a young person, formation of him as a y young Australian, the formation of him as a young nudgy man in, in the years ahead. So that trust you put in, our, put in us is something that we value. Uh, there's lots of good schools you could have taken your son to, but you've chosen Nudgy College for whatever combination of reasons that may, we, may be. We'll work very hard to, to repay that trust in, in us, uh, to care for your son, to educate him, to make the most of the opportunities in this school, be it in the classroom, which is the first and the core business of this school, as well as the range of opportunities that occur beyond the classroom as well. Um, so that's something that's not lost on us at, at all. So can I just mention as I come to conclusion, I actually have to absent myself on the way through this panel this morning of another meeting outside the school, a GPS meeting with other heads and principals, so I, I do apologise that I can't go right even through this panel th this morning. Um, but as we begin today, I guess it's my hope and my prayer that uh, as your son comes back to you this afternoon, I hope he comes back to you perhaps looking more confident than he did this morning. He comes back to you looking a little happier than he did this morning that he's ready to take a more confident step the next time he returns back to school. That you as parents at the end of the day are more informed about who we are as, at, as, as Nudgee College. That you are more informed as a year five parent, as a boarding parent, as a year nine parent. Uh, that you can begin that journey with him as well confidently as we go into next year. An enormous amount of work has gone in preparation from a whole range of staff to make today work for your son and all those boys who are here today. But certainly the leader of that, pr that process, can I just acknowledge Susan Shakespeare, all the work that she has done, the admissions team, those people who work in her office in preparing today, but also um, the work that they've done with you as parents in recent months, in recent years, and perhaps over a number of years in preparation for today. Uh, that preparation doesn't cease today. Susan is available every day, bar Christmas Day, I think. Susan, is that correct? Uh, don't ring her on Christmas Day. Uh, but I know she has received emails on Boxing Day, just to keep her on her toes. She may not answer it on Boxing Day, but you'll certainly hear from her over the holidays as, you, as we come towards those important days in January as your son uh, does come to school next year. I really look forward to that day. I hope that when we gather next year, we can do it in face-to-face. Um, and that whatever the challenge has been for 2020 for all of us and your sons, um, that we can look forward to 2021 to being a, a terrific year. In fact, the 130th year here at Nudgee. So I believe it'll be a great year for your son to begin his journey as a Nudgee man. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Fulliger. And I know uh, Peter will very much look forward to uh, meeting you all in January next year uh, on the boys' first day. Uh, and then later at the parent nights which follow, which certainly uh, I would strongly encourage people to be part of. Ladies and gentlemen, we produced a video before today um, to give you an idea of what your sons might experience for orientation day and what they're experiencing now. We've attempted to be as innovative as we can across this year 
uh, in terms of learning at home and the restrictions around COVID in making sure that our communication has still been fantastic. If we can, looking at our producer now uh, off, off screen, we're just going to have a look at that video of what your son might be experiencing right now. I have small shoes and soon they'll be taking some giant steps to my new school. Orientation day is where it all starts. Mum won't need to worry so much because it's an adventure I won't be having on my own. As soon as I arrive, I'll get my very own big brother. He'll help me settle in and keep me laughing. I'm sure he's going to look after me. Of course I'm going to look after you. You're going to have a great day. You'll meet your house dean, find out what sports you like doing with your activity staff and get your very own orientation day. How good's that? If you're coming in year five, you'll meet Mr. Crawley at the junior school. Take a look at your classroom for next year, sit in your future desk and make some new junior school friends, just like Sydney. Come on, let's have a game. We'll do some activities when you visit. Get your head measured for your school hat and we might even grab a muffin for morning tea. If you're starting in year seven, everything will feel kind of big but not for long, thanks to guys like Will. Do you have Google Maps? Because this place is really big. Nah, just joking. You'll get you around. We'll see Ross Oval, the library, we'll stop for a drink, and slide down our hill. Woo! And if you're gonna board at Nudgee, you'll tour the awesome boarding village, check out the dorms, score a few points, then finish the morning with a barbecue, and the school will cry with your big brother and your new mates. You'll have so much fun, you'll want to do it all over again. Orientation Day 2020. We'll see you there. What a great video. Meeting new people, key staff, house deans, directors of junior school and, and senior school students, uh, heads of boarding, uh, most importantly, meeting big brothers. Uh, getting to know other boys in grades and cohorts uh, and getting a feel for Nudgee as the boys walk around and a little bit of Nudgee catering thrown in there as well. Orientation day is a wonderful day and we hope your sons get in the car today, as Peter said, feeling that little bit more comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, to speak about our academic program, of course, uh, learning is the main game. That's why we are here uh, and to speak to that today, I uh, welcome Mr. Sepp, our Dean of Learning and Teaching. Thank you, Peter. Good morning to all of the families out there, and um, I trust your sons are having a very good day here at Nudgee. Um, as has been mentioned, core business at Nudgee College is learning and teaching. But that learning and teaching wouldn't be as effective if it wasn't wrapped in um, both the care and the faith that is Nudgee College and our community. So today, I particularly welcome uh, those year five and um, year seven boys which form the majority of um, the new arrivals here but also I'm aware that there's some year six boys starting and some boys in year eight to eleven um, who we've already spoken to in interview as well so um, amongst a, a complex and changing journey in learning and teaching as as uh, you progress through Nudgee College we're just going to try and give you some of the, um, the basics so you know who we are um, what we're about and of course where to go when you need some further information. So we'll start with our learning and teaching framework. And our learning and teaching framework, I suppose, captures in one page the main drivers that help us uh, establish how we're going to go about educating your son. And we also think when we look at a year five boy or a year seven boy arriving at Nudgee, or any boy indeed, what sort of boy are they going to be when they grow up to be a man and leave Nudgee College as well? So we keep those things in mind. And that's why we start in the centre there with our faith staff. And that really uh, gives us that authentic authenticity and it dictates to us how we're going to go about uh, managing that boy holistically when he's at Nudgee for the whole time and as he grows. Also in the bronze you'll see um, the text which is from our pedagogy, our habits of mind pedagogy. It might be a bit too small to read there. You can find that um, on the website of course. But what that gives us is a set of um, dispositions or behaviours and the sorts of things that we find that good learners and intelligent people in general do
do when they carry about the business of learning. So we always use those and teachers use those to try and help to frame learning activities and experiences. The other things on that page there are um, 21st century learning skills down there in the blue. So we've always got a mind, uh, our eye on what's going to happen next. And we're looking at those relational skills, those skills that will help impact beyond just what's happening in a subject, but uh, that helps you um, participate in society once you leave Nudgee. And of course, um, we are teachers, we hold them to the highest standard and we've got our eights all teaching standards to remind teachers that when they walk into a classroom, that's what they need to be. As far as getting to know us, uh, the journey will change. So in year five and year six, uh, you'll be in that junior school environment. And uh, Mr. Corley, who's been introduced, is the head of uh, that area and he works alongside Mr. Paul Casalino, who manages curriculum. And of course, those core teachers that you have in your primary school classrooms will be the key contact there. In the high school, um, I've got a great team of people that work with me. Uh, Miss Natalie Webber is someone you'll deal with if you're entering into that phase from year seven to year 10, and also the heads of faculty of those subject areas. And once again, classroom teachers are key. When you get to the senior school, you'll probably have a little bit more to do with me, uh, and you'll, the boys will certainly see a lot more of me. And also, the, Miss D. Tyrrell is our Director of Pathways, and she helps boys transition to what I said before. What are they going to do beyond the gate of Nudgee? And she helps them there. But um, the common theme in all of those uh, little columns there is that the classroom teacher appears in each one. And I think that's the, um, the thing that we need to hold on to. As an independent school, uh, we often get asked about our teaching programs and we frame our year five to 10 curriculum around the Australian curriculum like every other school in Australia and our year 11 and 12 curriculum is dictated by the QCAA. As a Catholic school, we also uh, teach religious education. That's a very important part of our curriculum. And once boys move into the senior stages of their schooling, we also run lots of VET programs as well. So there's lots of pathways that your boys will start to choose as they move through school, but they're all bound by those people. And of course, uh, lots of boys that wish to go on to university at the end of their schooling journey. And uh, boys this year, for the first time, uh, in year 12 at Nudgee College, as in every other Queensland school, are uh, sitting for an ATAR. So all of those things uh, help frame what we do at Nudgee. So Nudgee has uh, a lot of learning models that we use. So we blend traditional learning models with um, digital learning models. And the classroom can look like many, many things, from a chair and a table in a room, uh, out to a, a sports field or a, uh, an agricultural plot or a workshop, there's many different ways we learn in many different places. But a few things that tie us down, we're a Google school, which means we use the Google platform uh, for boys to be able to uh, provide work and teachers to deliver work. Uh, we're a BYOD school, and you may have heard about that or seen that on our website, which means bring your own device. There's sometimes some tension around what device that you need to buy, and often boys will uh, go home and tell mum and dad they need the most expensive one. That's not the case. Um, a Chromebook, especially if you're moving into years five or seven, is a fantastic place to start. And our IT team can advise you on specifications and the information on the website about the specifications. So please, if you haven't already done so, please look at that. Uh, we also communicate with you at home using our, um, our learning platform. You'd know it as the Parent Lounge. That's a place that will become familiar to you next year. And you'll be able to see what subjects your son is doing see what uh, assessment they've got coming up and various other uh, bits that help you keep taps on him. What we also do is uh, do lots of continuous reporting through that site, so you'll be able to get constant feedback about progress, and we combine that with a traditional end of semester grade report as you might have experienced in other schools. The last thing I'd say about all of that information is do not panic, uh, particularly if you're coming into the junior school, as most of the uh, families are here this morning, just make sure you turn up uh, with a smile on your face ready for school. Your primary teachers and Mr. Corley here uh, will make sure that that's eased and transitioned in. So uh, please don't get into a, a flurry about that. We also offer lots of um, opportunities uh, beyond what our curriculum advertises. So there's lots of enrichment opportunities. 
and they're for boys who may have a specific talent or an interest in areas. And so we run some internal uh, programs and we also run external programs. I've got the Da Vinci Cathlon, the Cathlon is the slide, which is um, something that we host uh, for all Queensland schools here at Nudgee College. That's, that's one example. Um, there's a, a range of different programs, such as writing a book in a day or um, any of the GPS um, extension days. All of those things uh, give boys other opportunities. Also, it's worth mentioning that uh, we have uh, a really good team of learning support people here, and they help us by making sure that your son can be the best that he can be. And we've got a very inclusive model, so we like to keep boys in the classroom and support them in the classroom if they have a learning need. And certainly, um, if your son does have a learning need, we'll be talking to you about that throughout that journey. So just finally from me, just a few things just to help you in that transition into next year, and that's to focus on your learning and let the results take care of themselves. Uh, also, observe personal growth in your son. Don't be fixated on awards and comparing yourself to other boys. How is your son going? And I'm looking at his growth and his gain. Uh, we really encourage you um, to communicate with teachers about your son's learning, and I talked about the, the parent lounge where you can see uh, information, but also getting that dialogue between uh, classroom teacher and um, parent is really critical, both in the times we have parent-teacher interviews and at other times if need arises. The other thing I would say is to be involved in your son's education. We see lots of families coming and supporting activities on Saturday. Think about also coming and supporting your son in the classroom. Not literally, we don't want you on the sideline. However, you know, be engaged and please uh, participate and make learning a priority in your household. And the last piece of advice, particularly for uh, um, Year 5 parents and Year 7 parents, um, you don't have to do all of the activities in the first semester. Okay, there's plenty of time through your journey, journey at Nudgee, and so those things will flow. But core business is learning and teaching, and it's a real privilege to be able to offer that to your son. Thank you. I have one message, sorry, one message for me. I'll try. Uh, there will be a few <coughs> Year 5 boy, uh, boys who actually they won't be worried. Their parents may be worried about um, the progressive um, um, academic testing, which is called PAT testing. And those session details will be sent out. And if you're in doubt, you can please contact us. But that's to test literacy and numeracy and to give us a benchmark so that we can help place your son into the correct class with the correct teacher. And it also gives us some idea of how things are progressing as your son moves through his uh, learning. Uh, so just like this morning, if you can turn up between 8.30 and 9 and drop your son off on the allotted day and uh, we'll be there to greet you, uh, someone from the junior school will greet you, you'll do that testing and that'll be finished by about 10.30 and you can pick your son up. And um, that's the end of my advertisement. Thanks, Mr Todd. Thank you, Jason. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure one of the reasons you're, you're sitting watching today and have, have chosen Nudgy is because of all of the amazing uh, programs that we do have on offer, but you will certainly hear us say very regularly that it's the business of Monday to Friday and the learning in the classroom, which is absolutely uh, the main game. Ladies and gents, everyone comes to orientation day with uh, different ideas of things that they want to know about, questions that they uh, want answered, uh, and then also uh, who they want to talk to and meet. So across about the next 10 minutes or so, I'll just highlight a couple of things for you that I would very much uh, put in the category of nuts and bolts, and the boys often laugh when I use that expression. The, the attention to detail type things of need to knows. Uh, Peter mentioned the work leading into this uh, of Susan Shakespeare, and I'd certainly like to uh, reiterate those words. And I'll draw people's attention to the Nudgee College orientation website, an absolutely critical source of all of the information that you will need to know as your son starts at Nudgee. You've been sent, I believe, uh, many times uh, links to that website, which has really critical information on it and will help answer a number of the questions that people have uh, put forward today. 
So ladies and gents, there are some forms that need to be uh, filled out as soon as possible, which you can find on that website. The medical form, the IT usage form, and there's various finance forms there that are absolutely critical for us to be able to care for your son uh, as best we can. And we would ask that those forms uh, which you can find on that website be returned as soon as possible. Key dates for 2021, particularly important for families travel, uh, for borders particularly, but for all families, the key dates for 2021 are on that website. There's a special uh, set of information there for the boarding families and uh, Christian and Edo will speak later concerning some of that. Stationery is required, of course. That's uh, some everyday life of being a student here at Nudgee. There will be further information uh, released on that in November, uh, and you'll get a, a link to that. But, of course, that website around stationery and textbooks, absolutely critical. People are already asking about their son being fitted for uniforms, uh, and our locker room is open uh, of course, every day. Uh, mums and dads, we would ask that you make a booking for your son. We do want to give special attention to each and every boy individually to make sure that they are comfortable uh, in their uniform. So on that Orientation Day website, there is fitting times that you can put uh, your son down for. Another much asked set of questions is around transport. Uh, and, and buses, and you'll find that information, of course, on our website as well. So Nudgee has 14 bus runs, and we are travelling as far north as the Kabulcha train station. We're heading over the south side. We're heading west over to Barden. Uh, and so there are lots of different points that you can connect with the Nudgee bus system and around 750 to 800 boys a day are on Nudgee buses, depending on the trainings and the time of year. You'll find that information uh, on the website, as well as the co-curricular activities and what you'll need to know in terms of getting your son involved. Jason mentioned uh, that we are a device school, and there certainly is, and I'm holding up now, a device checklist. Uh, that we have made for people. That would be something very simple that you could print out or even have on your phone uh, as you head to JB Hi-Fi or Harvey Norman or wherever it is that you get your device. Uh, and there's all the specifications and little tips there on that uh, bring your own device checklist that will help you make that purchase. And then, ladies and gentlemen, there is also information about uh, the final point that Jason made around progressive uh, academic testing. Just looking at Susan now, is there anything I haven't mentioned there, Susan? That the college directory. Yeah, the college directory. Thank you for that prompt. Now, this is something that's been in the boys' pack today, mums and dads. Uh, it's a college directory. That are, they are all the phone numbers and email addresses of people that you might want to reach out to at the school to help you uh, have a question answered. And certainly Susan can also be a real conduit there in terms of connecting people around critical questions that you might need uh, answered. But I'd certainly, uh, when your son comes home today uh, with his orientation pack that he's received, certainly grab that college directory and put it on the fridge and it's available online as well. Just a couple of final tips now uh, before we cover off on some questions and uh, close out for the day. I would let uh, people know uh, I've walked this journey as well. Uh, interestingly on our college leadership team uh, Mr Johnson, our Deputy Principal, has his son at Nudgee. And Mr Annetta, our Dean of Boarding, has his son at Nudgee. And I know that's been a rich experience for us to all be uh, on the college leadership team uh, and to have boys at the school. It has made us better leaders uh, and teachers to have had that experience. There's a picture of uh, Daniel and the beautiful Jen taken five years ago when Daniel had his first day 
uh, at Nunji College. Just with that in mind, um, that first day uh, is a, a very special one, coming up on Tuesday the 26th of January. And we might get to a video later about what that first day will look like. In terms of uniforms, the locker room will be open uh, on the public holiday for boarding families particularly, so that's a key piece of information there for the boarding families. All new students, uh, Wednesday the 27th of January is the first official day. We'll be here in the conference centre, we hope, uh, all together. Hopefully there's no further restrictions that we're having to deal with next January. Boys will gather in their houses, have things like student ID photos taken. They might get online uh, as a Nudgy student for the first time, be allocated lockers uh, in high school, meet classroom teachers and start talking uh, about learning and teaching as well as maybe even signing up for some of our sports. Year five, six and seven will be with their core teachers from that very, very first day. The next day then, uh, Thursday the 28th of January, the whole school community returns for the first time in 2021. Mums and dads, Peter talked about wherever boys come from, uh, it's pretty rare that they're coming from a school that is as large as Nudgee. So it's a big step and it can take some adjustment. So I'd certainly highlight that to uh, parents of boys in uh, going into grade five and going into grade seven. There's always great excitement about coming to Nudgee, but that can also see some nerves. And that can play out for the students um, as they get closer to that date. We will take great care of them when they come. So mums and dads, support your sons through that nervous stage as I know you will and certainly work with us on that. And throughout term one, it can just be different for them. They are coming to a school with a big story and it is a large school, boys walking around places that they have to be. It can take some adjustment and we'll speak further to that on the parent nights uh, next February to give you further tips. I would encourage you as much as your sons to get involved. That's certainly a thing that you will hear uh, at Nudgee and there's lots of different ways that you can do that. You can directly buy in uh, through your son's house. You could be connected to our support groups, many of which uh, are very active uh, here at the college. Our ladies auxiliary, various sporting uh, support groups as well buy into those things, buy into this village of Nudgee as a family and that will certainly be a strong message to your son as well about the importance of this educational journey. Mums and Dads organisation is a focus, certainly you will be sent a college calendar later in this year and I'd encourage you to put that on the fridge, it exists online as well most importantly because that can be updated uh, a little bit more in real time. But that college calendar is uh, a very important organisational tool. By way of example, I know yesterday we sat down with Daniel, uh, who's now at the back end of year nine. Dan was on his device on Student Cafe. Jen and I were on the parent portal. And we were looking at what commitments he had coming up. Uh, he's rowing this term and there's various mornings of the week but most importantly, what assignments and assessments does he have and when are those things due? I certainly encourage you to engage all of those tools uh, in helping your son to be organised and to be getting the most out of Nudgee and particularly to be engaged in his education and his journey. We absolutely have a deliberate plan plan in forming the best young man we can as soon as boys enter the school gate, whether that be in grade five or if they're only coming to us for one year at the end uh, in year 12. Our school motto is sign of faith, signum for day. And that is absolutely what we are trying to do. 
uh, in, a, in more of a lay expression of that, we are trying to produce the best possible men we can so that they can go out into the world and be wonderful global citizens. Your work on the family front is absolutely critical on that and we recognise that important role and we want to work in partnership with you uh, around forming that young men uh, of values and I encourage you to work in partnership with us in doing that. Mums and dads uh, and friends, you will have heard uh, about that advice often connected to Nudgee. Started over 130 years ago, Nudgee had a co-curricular program back then. And we did that then, the same reasons we do now. A busy boy uh, is a happy boy, and an engaged boy is a happy boy. So I certainly encourage your son to be involved and engaged in the classroom and beyond. A simple guide for everyone is we'd love boys to be doing two co-curricular activities for us uh, in a year. That could be from the sports area, it could be from the cultural area, or it could even be from the social justice area. But we find at least two things in a year will help your son and you feel very, very connected to his school, feel connected to friends, make mates beyond uh, the classroom, and will lead to a happier uh, and engaged young man. Just one proviso I would put on that, particularly for our young boys in year five, to a lesser extent, year seven, because of the amount of choices here, boys themselves can, at that early and young age, just overdo it a little bit. So mums and dads hear that advice about involvement, but when boys are operating across, say, two sports in the one term uh, after school, you do have to keep an eye on their energy levels uh, and stress levels. So just walk carefully with that idea of balance as well. Finally, of course, enjoy the journey. Recently I read the, uh, the humorous book Land Before Avocados which talks about back in the day, what it was like uh, being a kid riding your bike and coming home when it was time for dinner. Uh, a much more carefree approach back in the day to being a young person. There seems so much more that we have to do these days as parents, almost approaching parenting uh, as we do sometimes our professional lives. But I'd certainly say to you, enjoy this journey of Nudgee. Buy in as a family, become involved like your sons will, we know, but be relaxed as well. Being uh, part of this Nudgee Village is a lot of fun uh, and we hope that you enjoy that journey with us. Now I believe now we are going to some questions that people were good enough to put in uh, before today and we help, hope we can answer some of those before we're finishing today with some information uh, about boarding. Ladies and gentlemen, what type of laptop will be required? That um, bring your own device checklist, which I have advertised and is online, is absolutely critical. Just to personalise that then, certainly when Daniel was in year five, we spent about $500 uh, on his first laptop. That's all we were spending and he got that for Christmas uh, before he came to Nudgee and that would be a fairly common thing to happen iPads don't meet that uh, standard uh, and that is uh, on that checklist as a, as a piece of advice. Mums and dads, uh, as boys get much deeper into high school around the end of grade 9, grade 10, it is common for parents to perhaps spend a little bit more money on their needs at that later time. But again, I uh, send you to the orientation website for that bring your own device checklist. People these days are interested in schools uh, mobile phone policy and I thank the, the families who have asked us uh, about that. Christian will speak later about uh, after hours and in boarding. Uh, certainly at 
school. We realise that boys bring those phones um, to school uh, and that is a way that you communicate with your sons. We recognise that. Boys will often listen to music and things on their way to school on the bus. Once they're here, we certainly don't want boys walking around with headphones uh, on, being antisocial, and we, we certainly stress the importance of those not being seen. In classes, mobile phones are out uh, of sight. Now, often teachers will use things like uh, tidy boxes and so on to collect phones uh, and have uh, a strict rules around that in the classroom. Boys do have access to their phones during break times um, and that is sometimes a time that you're communicating with them about uh, after school activities. We are looking at that and, and all schools are always looking at their policies around that and we are having discussions at the college leadership team level. And certainly we encourage you, if you have any concerns, to communicate with us and to monitor your son's device usage as well. There's a question about when will sports training uh, be announced. Again, that orientation uh, website and the co-curricular co components to that. I can certainly say that a very successful way to begin at Nudgee if your son is going to do a number of Term 1 sports is to be part of the January camps that will be on offer in things like swimming and cricket and rowing. Uh, but there will be information about those uh, on our Orientation Day website. But they are great opportunities for boys to meet uh, boys who will be in their grade before school starts. Sometimes uh, people come to us with a, a history of uh, a passion for a particular sport which is not one of the GPS sports or is not offered as part of our program. So by way of example, AFL is one of those. There is a small window of opportunity in AFL. Nudgee enters three teams in a Queensland schoolboys knockout tournament. And depending on how the school goes in that tournament, would uh, say how long and many games the boys would play. There'd be a junior team, an intermediate team, and a senior team in AFL. But like things like rugby league, there are also local clubs that play those sports, and boys can be at Nudgee, they can be engaged in our co-curricular program, but they can also be playing club sport as well, and AFL and rugby league are certainly one of those. If your son is a boarder, and wants to do one of those uh, off-campus club sports, have negotiations with your head of boarding house, and what is often the case is a boarding family will partner with a day student family who is already at that club in negotiation with the head of boarding house so that the boy can continue that passion. Uh, around uniform fittings, I mentioned earlier, that there is uh, booking times available through that orientation day website and it takes about an hour and we that's absolutely critical uh, mums and dads if you were to turn up on spec uh, uh, to the locker room you may not get the the level of service and attention that we want to give and it also could see you waiting quite a while around December and January so please use that uniform appointment uh, booking form that is on our website Similarly for our bus runs, well done to the mums and dads who braved our buses this morning uh, as we came from all over uh, Brisbane and South East Queensland to, to be at Orientation Day today. Uh, and we hope the ride home for those parents at one o'clock uh, is a lovely one. But information about our buses and bus passes, again, on that Orientation Day website. Just looking at Susan there, have I got the tick of approval yep. there, Miss? Thank you, Susan, for that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we started Nudgee, when Nudgee started in 1891, we started exclusively as a boarding school. And that is an absolutely critical part of the fabric of Nudgee life. So, so to speak uh, about boarding today, we have Mr. Christian Onetto, who is our Dean of Boarding at the moment, and sitting next to him is Mr. Sean Tuvey who has just been appointed Dean of Boarding for the new year. So I now pass you to Christian uh, and Sean.
Thank you very much, Peter, and, and it's certainly a pleasure to be here online uh, with all of our families. I certainly encourage uh, all of our Dayboy families to, to certainly remain online. Maybe some of this might be of interest to you. We do know that many of our Dayboys, uh, through their Nudgee journey, do spend some time uh, in our boarding community, uh, whether it's for a term or a year or, or in, the, in the last few years of their, certainly of their journey uh, at Nudgee. Uh, as Peter mentioned, um, I finish at the end of this year. And it's always the case at Nudgee when one person leaves, a better one arrives. Uh, so it's an absolute pleasure uh, that uh, Sean will, will be taking over uh, this very important role uh, next year. Sean has an incredible commitment to boarding uh, and, a, and a real passion for boys' wellbeing. And I know that uh, the, the program and the boys uh, and the community are, are in wonderful hands for next year. Uh, it was wonderful to meet, or meet and, and greet again many of our families uh, last night who brought their boys in. Uh, for that sleepover. Uh, it, was, it was great to be able to connect with you again. Uh, I just wanted to, to assure those families that didn't have that opportunity for their boys to come in uh, last night that if, if things do change around our borders, whether that be international or state-based, and you are able to, to make, um, make it to Brisbane uh, in the coming weeks, you are most welcome to connect with us to organise an orientation uh, night uh, for your son uh, to have that experience. But I also want to assure you that even if you don't have that opportunity, that in January on the 26th, uh, as Peter mentioned, we do run that orientation night for all brand new boarders, which is terrific uh, for them to be able to engage with all of the new boys the, and uh, the year 12s uh, next year. And so that orientation gives those boarders a, a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to start their, their journey uh, just with a small group of boys on their first night before the Wednesday when all new students do arrive at Nudgee. Uh, as Peter Fulliger mentioned earlier as well, uh, it's wonderful that Susan and the admissions team are here over December and January. If you do want to connect with them uh, at any point to, to discuss um, or, or have any questions, but Sean I know as well, uh, who lives on campus, uh, is, is very happy as well if you want to connect with him over December and January. If you're in town, you've had the opportunity to go to the locker room, you may like to touch base with Sean as well uh, to, to have a conversation um, and, and preparation for your son for next year. Probably a couple of points that I, I'd like to make uh, today that I think are really important. And the first one is around knowing your staff in regards to that boarding house that your son is in. Uh, shortly up on the screen, you'll see some wonderful faces. I know that in our orientation booklet, there was a little bit of a, a, a bio on our four heads of boarding house. Uh, those, uh, those men are, are terrific in, in the role that they do and they are so passionate about looking after your boys. But I wanted to highlight today uh, the house mother. Uh, and the house mother you'll see there, the four lovely ladies who, who care for our, our boarders. Uh, they are really important to get to know as well. They are quite often the first, boy, uh, the first person that your boys will meet um, in the morning when they wake up. They're the first person that they'll see when they come back at three o'clock in the afternoon. And so they play such an integral role in the formation and care for, for, for the young men in boarding. Uh, so there's some wonderful uh, people, as I said, in each boarding house. And you as a family, I encourage you as parents to, to, to get to know those, uh, those wonderful people who, who spend so much time with your sons. Uh, as Peter mentioned as well, communication is such an important part. And obviously as a boarding community, with the tyranny of distance, uh, it's I think even more important for our boarding families to really know and feel confident and comfortable in our communication process. Uh, as Peter mentioned, the team app, uh, which all activities have, or sporting activities and, and cultural activities, but boarding also has a uh, boarding app on, on that team app where we share a lot of information, we share a lot of photos and news and documents. So that's a really important source of communication, along with obviously stool emails and the college newsletter as well. But I know that boarding families find the team app a really wonderful source of information. The other one there is the REACH uh, boarding program. That REACH program is designed around leave. So when boys wish to go on leave for weekends or, or, or any nights or anything, they put that process through a REACH application. And that really involves you as families, but also host families as well. So we'll need to get details so that every time a boy leaves our care, uh, you as the family, we as the carers, we know where they're going, who they're with, what they're doing, and that's a, an important process uh, for us to know. And we will share that information with you uh, in that orientation process uh, next year. Uh, as Peter mentioned, our device management uh, policies in boarding, uh, like a lot of families at home, I have three young, young kids and we are having this discussion, like I'm sure many of you do as well, about managing devices and building good habits. 
Our approach here in the boarding house is one of first restriction in a sense of, of taking away the distraction and then building in education and understanding on how uh, to best have those phones and, and devices and have the best habits possible. So we have the, the year five to 10 boys will put their devices away at night into locked cabinets uh, as a source of, of removing that distraction. Uh, we also discourage the boys obviously to have their um, earphones in at different times because boarding life is a very social environment and so the, the, the focus there very much is always for boys to be socially engaged with the people around them. So at morning tea and lunch and dinner times, we don't let boys have their phones out during, um, during that time in, in the dining room. It's like any dining room anywhere in the world. It's an opportunity for boys to sit, share conversation and share a meal together. We do encourage families as well to engrave uh, their devices, phones, laptops and so forth. It does make that uh, job a little bit easier when boys do misplace those uh, at times. Uh, so that's an important part um, to remember in preparation for January of next year. Um, probably the last thing I wanted to touch on, it's a really important one, it's a conversation that I, I have frequently with families uh, at around homesickness. And for many of you that I interviewed, we would have talked a little bit briefly about homesickness and tips to really uh, ensure that you can get through that process as smoothly as, as we can. And I, as I said in, in the interview with you, and I say this to all families all the time, uh, since 1891, uh, every single border that's come through Nudgee has suffered some level of homesickness because of course, they're losing that connection from home for a period of time. Uh, so we talked to boys and, and Peter mentioned this just before about being busy and being connected and, and uh, through activities and that's certainly wonderful. The one that I would probably encourage you most, I mentioned it before about uh, staff, is we encourage our boys to really choose a go-to staff member in their boarding house that they feel that they can connect with. And we talk about that go-to person being someone that they can ensure that when they face a small challenge or a small problem, they have a staff member that they can, that can assist them in, in overcoming or, or finding a solution to that challenge. Of course, mum and dad are there uh, to, to have that phone conversation but as I find uh, the, the staff member is best able to solve it on the ground uh, there and then. Quite often mums and dads will ask me about, well, what can I do to, to help mums and dads with homesickness? Unfortunately, I don't have that program built yet, but uh, I know that that might be a project for Sean to take over in, in, in the coming years. But what I do say and encourage to parents is that certainly the checkup phone call when you, you do ring, ring your son is a really important one. But I ask you to, to be mindful of how often you do call your son. As I'm sure you can imagine, when you hang up from speaking to your son, there's going to be an element of sadness uh, for him, especially in those early days, because he's going to have, have missed you and, and saying goodbye again. So if you're calling him two, three times a day, well, that's two or three times a day that he's feeling sad and two or three times that he needs to then be distracted and, and uh, reconnected and, and, and moved into a positive frame of mind. So I encourage families to think about how often and I encourage families to think about when. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the afternoon is a good time. First thing in the morning is a good time. In the evening, I'd, I'd encourage you to, to, to think strongly about whether or not that's going to be the best thing for your son because the last thing you want to do is for your son to hang up the phone with you at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night and then he has to go to bed and it's all dark. And that, that's not a great experience for anyone. So thinking about the timing is a really important one as well. Uh, as, as I mentioned when we talked about the st uh, staff, you communicating with staff is, is always really in, in the first step. So if you think your son's struggling, uh, as we expect all of them will at different times, for you to reach out to, to those staff members, whether it's the head of house or the house mother, just to let them know so that they can provide that little bit of extra attention and care uh, for him. One thing I did notice, and it wasn't in, in Peter Todd's book on, on uh, the land before avocado, but back 20 years ago when boys, or 30 years ago when boys were boarding, they didn't have their own phone. So every time they had a concern or a problem, they didn't have the ability to phone home. They had to wait and line up and use the public phone, maybe once a week or, or whatever it might have been. And what, that, what we found is that boys were able to then overcome their problems, move on, and the conversations mm. with parents were more based around what they did that week, some of the ups, some of the downs, but it was more of a holistic conversation. What we find now, because boys have an immediate phone call and access to home, is that you will hear every single problem every time it happens. Now, that's okay. What I need parents to understand is, is we are there with them all the time and we are certainly caring for them all the time. 
It may be that you do hear lots of little negative things. That doesn't mean that they're not enjoying it. A great example, I saw a boy just recently who, who, um, who joined us and his mum rang me to say that she was worried that he was really homesick. Yet every time I saw him, big smile on his face, surrounded by lots of friends and looking like he was loving every moment of, of, of his time. So just being really mindful as well that the phones are a wonderful uh, tool for, for families. Uh, but they all, like always, can have a double edge to them. So to be really conscious of that as well. So we as staff are certainly managing and, and working with boys on that as well. But I certainly wish uh, all, of, all of the families there online uh, a, a wonderful uh, Christmas. And uh, I know that when you arrive next year uh, for your start of your nudgy journey, it's going to be a terrific one. And, and you are in wonderful hands here with, with Sean and, and the boarding team. Uh, so thank you. Thanks, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, your sons right now are probably biting into one of those legendary nudgy muffins. Uh, and uh, around diets, of course, I look forward to getting off stage here and having one of those myself. Thank you for being with us. We wanted to connect with you absolutely today. We have absolutely missed the fact that you are not here with us on campus. And we look forward to uh, being uh, socially distanced, of course, but connecting with you as soon as we can with the elbow bump or the fist bump or whatever it is that we're allowed to do uh, over the coming months. We want to meet you and get to know your story as well as your sons. Your sons in a moment will start their tour around Nudgee, getting to know all of the different spaces that they'll need to be in next year and they'll be doing that with their big brothers, continuing to meet those key people and along the way answering a bit of an interesting quiz uh, about Nudgee. Before around midday, they end up in this conference centre, uh, which we are in right now, where the focus is really about activity engagement uh, before a bit of a, an early step into school spirit and learning the college war cries. So we'll look forward to hosting the boys in this hall in about an hour and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. Uh, but most importantly, thank you for trusting us with your sons. It is something that we never take for granted and we are excited that they and you are starting that journey with us today. Wishing you all the very best from Nudgee today.